morning, everybody. This is Scott Fresner with TBiz Network. I want to thank you for joining my first TBiz Network webinar. I've done webinars before, but this is the first one with TBiz. What we're going to cover today is the introduction to my brand new TSEPS 3.0 separation software for Photoshop. And this is scheduled to be an hour, but it, it'll go an hour, maybe less than an hour. Uh, I'm going to show you all the features of the program, talk about color separations, kind of give you a razzle-dazzle of what the program does. And I'm going to be showing you, uh, of course, the power of TSEPS. TSEPS is an automated color separation program that works only in a Photoshop CS6 and CS, or CC. And um, the reason that it only works in that is because Adobe made a lot of changes in CS6 and CC, and they did a lot of changes to the development side, meaning that a developer could do a lot more graphical things with panels and things like that. So the new TSEPS 3.0 is in the panels section of Photoshop, and it has a graphical interface, and I think that's real important because the old TSEPs had just buttons, and we still sell, of course, old TSEPs because if you have CS6 and don't want to go to TSEPs 3 or you have anything as low as down to version 6 or 7, frankly, you can still use TSEPs 2.0. Let me talk to you really quickly about the whole process. Uh, it's interesting, I get a lot of emails uh, almost weekly saying, when will you have something for Corel? And this is actually a Photoshop plugin. This only works in Photoshop. It doesn't work in Corel, and there's no plans to do a Corel plugin. Other guys have stuff like that. But in the old days, we would do stuff like this, separations like this, in the camera. It would take uh, maybe one or two days of doing camera shots, masks, things like that, to try and get these things to work. Go to press, do prints, say a prayer, hope that, uh, that the thing worked. And so then I started teaching color separations in Photoshop, and for years taught the process, but always felt there had to be a way to automate the whole process. So back in 1999, I brought out a program called Fast Films that has about 9,000 users worldwide. That evolved into the current program called TSEPS, and now TSEPS 3.0. And what this does is it automates the entire process. It does stuff like this. So when you look at, at what the program does, it loves things like this. Certainly, TSEPS will do spot color. But frankly, if you build it in Corel or AI and you build it as spot color, there's really no reason to use TSEPS for it. But what happens is you'll get a file in that maybe is a, a spot color kind of a file like this, and you get it as a JPEG. You know somebody built this somewhere in a vector program, but all you got was a JPEG. That's where TSEPS shines, because it will take a JPEG and convert the entire file to all the different separations. Now what it does basically is what's called channel separations. Let me bring a file up here real quick. It works in the channels panel in Photoshop. So this is the channels panel over here. And TSEPS, let me get this to a bigger screen, creates individual channels. Now if you're, if you're new to Photoshop, your eyes glaze over and you're, you're worried that you don't know Photoshop, I can tell you honestly that a common comment that I get from people is that thank you for forcing me to learn Photoshop. So if you're a Corel user or an AI user or Adobe Illustrator user and you're, you're kind of new to Photoshop, don't worry about it. It's no big deal. You're going to use just a few little parts of Photoshop on a regular basis. There are some parts of Photoshop I've never even used. But in Photoshop, you've got what's called channels and you've got what's called layers. Images are built in layers. This session is not on how to build images. This is on how to create separations. These are commonly called alpha channels in Photoshop and alpha channels print. So we can actually Tell Photoshop, give me all the yellow, make it an alpha channel, give me all the blue, make it an alpha channel, give me all the green, make it an alpha channel, and I make it sound real simple. And if you're new to Photoshop, you might be thinking, well, why wouldn't I just do CMYK? Well, on a dark shirt or any, any shirt where you need a white underbase, Photoshop has no clue about how to build an underbase. We would never print a design like this. I say never loosely. Uh, we would typically never print a design like this as CMYK. We want that blue to pop off the shirt. We want the red to pop off the shirt. We want the yellow to pop off the shirt. We want to use off-the-shelf standard normal inks. And so TSEPS does automated uh, channel separations in Photoshop and does most SEPS in less than 30 seconds. Now, it does what I call the heavy lifting, meaning we're trying to take a design with lots of colors and make it work with off-the-shelf Plastisol ink. That is not an easy task. So when you're done separating, you'll take a few minutes and do tweaks. I do thousands of color separations per year, and of course I obviously use my program, and I will run TSEPs on it first. I'll take another five or ten minutes and do little tweaks and little adjustments and boost the color, reduce the color, maybe pop a logo, and do final tweaks, and it saves me hours of doing it the old way. Now the difference between TSEPS 2 and TSEPS 3, first of all, is obviously the interface. It has a brand new graphical interface. 
and it's very intuitive. So T-CEPs, as you can see, does a variety of separation types, and we're going to cover these individually, but it does simulated process color, index color, CMYK color. It will do spot color. Again, if you get that JPEG in, that is obviously spot color, but you don't have the vector version, TCEPs will do that for you, including trapping and choking of the, of the colors. It will also do the black and white routine, which is getting very trendy. You see lots of monochrome images on shirts, and you often think, well, those are only, uh, maybe it's one or two colors, and sometimes there are three or four colors with a couple of gray levels. So TCEPs does these various types of separations. Now the difference between TCEPs 2 and TCEPs 3 is that TCEPs 3 has been greatly improved. Each routine has been gone through meticulously. I spent hundreds and hundreds of hours going through each routine, making it better, cleaning up, up colors where the greens are cleaner, the blues are cleaner. It's definitely hard to take off-the-shelf plastisol and make it all print nice and clean. So I went through every routine, cleaned them all up, and added new routines. So we've got a lot of new routines. In fact, if you're new to the program, you wouldn't see the new routines, but if you've been using the older TCEPs, you can see that we now have a routine for flesh tones. We have a routine for flames. Uh, if you're doing motorcycles and things with flames, you need the oranges. We have a routine for ocean scenes where you have multiple blues, maybe two or three levels of blue. And so depending on your job, you can run the routine that works the best. And sometimes you run a routine and go, well, that didn't do very well and you'll come back and run a different routine. The difference between TCEPs and the competition is I think that at the end of the day, TCEPs is like having me at your computer doing the CEPs for you. It's got all the Scott Fresner tweaks, and I've been separating now most of my adult life, and so I'm a good separator. And the program is based on my knowledge. At the end of the day, a lot of, us, a lot of the uh, other programs will build, of course, channel separations that look the same, but the proof is in how do they print. It's one thing to build a channel separations, and I get separation files in from customers who say, hey, can you help fix these separations? And I look at them and go, who the heck did this, and why did they do it that way? And so just because you see channels in a separation, uh, don't assume it's going to print correctly. TCEPs adjusts for dot gain. It adjusts for how the inks print wet on wet on press. Typically with most of dark shirt prints, you print the underbase and flash cure it. So TCEPs does all the adjustments for you. Uh, it previews on the monitor very close to how it's going to print. That's assuming you're good at burning a screen and you can hold a little tiny halftone dot on the screen. My, uh, my new users sometimes struggle with halftone dots because basically you've got individual channels that are gray levels, and we'll talk about output before we end the session. But you've got to burn that on a screen. That's going to be a little tiny halftone dot. And so a new user will sometimes struggle with uh, holding all the halftone dots. I can tell you for a fact that a program like my program, TCEPs, will make you a better printer because you'll learn about halftone dots, you'll learn about using high mesh counts. Most of the stuff that you see hanging in Walmart and places like that uh, is done either with, with my program, and it's typically on a 230 mesh for the underbase, which if you're a foreign user, that's 90 in centimeters. It's on a 305 mesh for all the colors, and again, if you're a foreign user and, and thinking in metrics, that's 120 mesh. If you're a new user, you're thinking, well, wow, that's just too high of a mesh. I could never get my white ink through that. Well, all I have to say is just trust me. Reduce your white ink a little bit. It'll flow through the mesh, and you're going to get a great print. But it's a new experience if you've never done this kind of printing. Now, this, again, is not a Corel program. And Corel Draw, I made a statement in a recent article that you really couldn't do this in Corel, and somebody corrected me on that. And that's true. You could do some of this stuff in Corel, but it is not the program of choice. Uh, in my opinion, I know we have a lot of Corel users out there and people that write Corel software, I think, hanging on this webinar today and kind of checking out what I'm saying. But the truth is the world uses Photoshop for photorealistic images. And uh, it's just what it does. Now let's talk real quickly about the art end of using a program like this. This will seem a little... Uh, awkward for some of you because you really need to have the artwork looking two different ways. If you're going to make separations that work on light and dark shirts, you need two versions of the art. If I'm going to print this image on a white shirt only and I want to uh, print just these colors on a white shirt, then I just need this, this piece of art. But the minute I want to go on a black shirt, I need a version of the artwork with black around it. I typically call that a mask. And in the old camera days, we would actually cut what's called ruby lift. And that'll date me and date some of you that are watching this program. We would cut ruby lift masks around the image. Because to make an underbase, I have to make a negative of this, basically. If I make a negative of this file, then all the areas that are white go black. And when I burn a screen from that, I print a white block around the image. So you just need to buy into the fact that somehow, some way, you need two versions of the art. 
Now, those of you that run TSEPs know this already. Those of you that are new to this kind of separation process, don't let this bog you down. Typically, if you build the design in Adobe Illustrator, uh, let me show you a file here real quick. If you build the design in AI, which this is really a very typical vector design uh, that was built years ago in Corel Draw, and yes, I have it as a pixel-based file now in Photoshop. And but if you build it in a graphic a vector program, you can actually export the file or save as a PDF. And when you open it up in Photoshop, it has a transparent background. See those checks? That means that the background of this file is transparent. And that's important because it's easy then to make what we call the black and the white version. In fact, TSEPS has a button now. Let me close these other files out first. It has a button that says create two versions of the artwork right here. And that's going to take a file that it came into you in a layer. And if you're new to Photoshop, don't let this bog you down, but you need a file in a layer with transparent background, and it will automatically create the two versions of the artwork. And it prompts you with everything it's going to do. It says, here's what's going to happen, and then it just does it. And TSEPS just made a black version. It made a white version that we could now save off as the black or the white version. Now, this again, don't let this bog you down. This is just the nature of making separations for light and dark shirts. If this design is only going on a white shirt, this is all I need. But if we're going to go on a dark shirt where we need an underbase and a highlight, we need a version with black where the shirt would be because we don't want to be able to print white where the shirt's going to be. Let me close this file out. Now, I am in uh, Photoshop CS6, and those of you that are, that are using CS6 now know that you can have different color schemes. Uh, I tend to be not old school, but I, I don't like the dark scheme. But you can change the interface in Photoshop. You can change it to the dark scheme, which I kind of call the gamer's scheme. scheme. And TSEPS works in it, and the colors change, and it becomes nice and vibrant. Uh, I'm not a big fan of this, but that's just my own preference. So I'm going to change this back to the medium gray level that I'm used to because that's how Photoshop normally looks and I feel like it's, it's less of a photographer gamers look, it's more of a traditional look. Now let's talk about the various routines. Let's talk about simulated process color. Simulated process color is a routine that converts all of the image into grayscale, gray levels, and you print out the file as halftone dots. Meaning I've got to take, when I'm separating, I print out each one of these individual files. And if, you, if you're if you a small printer and you're choking on the fact this is nine colors, TSEPS will let you actually reduce the color count. I could get most of these files down to five or six colors. Uh, some files with lots of Pantone matches might need more. Uh, but maybe picky customer might want more colors, and those of you with six-color presses might struggle a little bit. Again, I do SEPS all day long, and, and you know, I bet 80% of the separations I do, the customer says it's got to be six or less. And so you start combining colors and, and making compromises. But basically, simulated process means we're going to take a grayscale image and convert this file to halftone dots and print it out using off-the-shelf plastisol. In fact, TSEPS tells you the print order, recommends the mesh count, gives you the Pantone callout, and in some cases it's not a big deal, but it tries to use off-the-shelf colors, kind of a royal blue, a mono blue, a scarlet red, pretty much off-the-shelf colors. Most of the separations I do are simulated process color. Simulated process color is, is easy to print at press. It gives you smooth and clean gradations, and so typically you wouldn't use a simulated process color. Now, TSEPS gives you lots of options. You can actually now, with TSEPS 3.0, pick the colors from the design and separate from that. Now, that is huge, and it means I can click on a button, and I can bring up a design, and I can actually sample the various key colors from the design. I am not going to run that routine, this routine in this webinar, and the reason is simple. This routine takes a long time. This routine will take five to ten minutes to do the actual crunching. It's going to sample this file up to over a thousand DPI, and if you don't have a lot of free memory or a fast computer, your computer is going to start to struggle a little bit. And I'm not going to run this routine here, but this is a killer routine because you can actually sample the colors just like you would if you were doing index color. You can sample the colors and do the separations based on the actual colors in the design. Now, again, if you have a design with flames or flesh or water, you're going to run one of these routines. If you're printing with discharge ink, T 
TSEPS runs a simulated process five color R9 color just discharge routine and the dis difference in discharge is basically the underbase is different and the colors definitely uh, print different and so we have to change how we display the final print for discharge. And if you're doing hot split heat transfers, TSEPS does a simulated process hot split heat transfer routine. Basically the way it works and typically when I do SEPS I'll start off running my nine color routine and again if you have a six color press don't choke on that because we could actually reduce the color count down but I want to see my options. The nine color routine and it's going to prompt me, it's going to say here's what you're going to do and it's going to say to open the black or the mask file first, open the white or the unmasked file second and let's just uh, run something simple here. Well, we'll do that absolute print. It's just going to cook. And it's kind of fun to watch. Just kind of watch it cook. Now it's analyzing the art, adjusting for dot gain. Now it does most separations in less than 30 seconds. My computer is definitely running a little slower because I'm doing a webinar and I'm, and I'm multi-monitoring here also. Now I'm going to change the view slightly. I've got it set for big channels, but you can't really see all the channels. I'm going to change this down to a little smaller channel view here, bring the channels over next to my design. Now the reason I ran this routine was to have choices. This is a real simple design. It didn't need choices, but I, I chose to run it. Now TSEPS 3 gives you two different underbases. One is an optional underbase, and an optional meaning it's a little flatter, has more detail in it. Typically an underbase for a dark shirt is a high contrast. And so TSEPS gives you more choices. So we're going to keep the high contrast underbase. We know this design has some yellow. There's the yellow showing up there. There's no pink. There's no light. There's some blue in the, in the label. There's definitely some green in the lime here. Now TSEPS 3.0 also gives you multiple black options. Earlier version of TSEPS gave you one black. That's the black plate there. TSEPS 3.0 gives you a halftone black that is just the areas of the image that are not solid, just half tone. A lot of times you want to print two blacks, and those of you that are only printing a six-color press, you'll wonder why. But when you're doing a design with lots of shadow areas and some solid type areas, you really want to print a black for the solid areas. That way you can apply more squeegee pressure, and you can get that to print nice and dark. But you don't want to kill the half tones. So TSEPS allows you to either print a composite black of, all, of everything or just an optional half tone black, a spot black. Again, that's hard if you have a limited number of number of heads. Let's just take a look at the final steps here. Uh, we'll look at that. Look at the green. We can dump everything else. So we've got it down to one, two, three, four, five color print. Uh, we typically don't print black on a black shirt, though. I'm going to take that off. But we would typically print the highlight on a black shirt. We might print the optional black on a black shirt. And so TSEPS creates channel separations. Let's close this file out. Let me run one more. And again, these are simulated process. I will typically always run simulated process first. It's, the, uh, it's the, the cleanest routine as far as giving you lots of choices. It prints nice. Uh, we'll just do this Barbie boat. And again, it's just going to cook. Now we'll take the same design that I ran as the nine color and we'll run it as a five color. We'll let TSEPS reduce the color count. The problem with reducing the color count is often the green. It'll try and make with a five color routine green from blue and, and uh, yellow and that gives you not a great green. If you have a lot of green in your design, uh, in this case of the Barbie boat, there's some green in the fish's head, some green in the lure here, and so it, we may or may not need it and again it depends probably on the customer, what compromises they're willing to live with. New Photoshop allows you, wants to force you to dock the image, and uh, not a big fan of that, but there is a bug in Photoshop where if you don't have it set to dock the images, uh, it won't find the previous file, and TSEPS is often looking for the previous version, making duplicates, and so you've got to keep it set to dock the image. Now basically, let's take a quick look at it. We'll look at the high contrast underbase, there's the flatter underbase, and we'll just take a look at all the colors, lots of colors, way too much, more than you want to print, don't print black on the shirt. Let's just take off the gray. Let's see if we can take off brown. You can see minor changes. Again, I'm just showing you how you quickly let T-steps do the heavy lifting 
Uh, let's click on the underbase, and now we can do a tweak. I'm not done, of course, but I can do a tweak. I'm going to go to what's called Tone Curve, and you'll kind of live here, and I'm going to pop the underbase a little bit. I'm going to uh, make the underbase a little high contrast. I want to just tweak it a little bit, and I might pop that yellow a little bit. This is These are the tweaks you're going to do, and you pretty much kind of run the routines, and then you start boosting colors. Looks pretty good. I'm not done. I would delete all these colors that I don't need. I might determine if I want to print a halftone black on a black shirt. Probably not. And we can change the shirt color. See what it looks like on a different shirt. Now I've got to print the black. And I'm going to boost that black with tone curve. I just did a shortcut to tone curve. Pop that a little bit. And I might do a few more minor tweaks and I'm done. That is simulated process color. And again, if the design had lots of oranges, maybe it was a Harley design with flames, I'd run the flames image. If it had any kind of, like I, like I should have, I should have, and I wasn't probably thinking clearly, I should have run the water, ocean, boat uh, routine here, because that gives you a turquoise. This design had a little more of a turquoise in the background. It would have given me more choices for the blues. Now, let's, before we go into index colors, CMYK, and the rest, let's talk about the uh, optional routines. You can see you have lots of choices here. You can remove some black for the underbase. You can choke the underbase. You can trap colors. Now, choking and trapping in Photoshop is not the same as it would be in Illustrator or Corel. It's done similar, but it has to be on areas of solid color because you don't really choke or trap areas of halftones. Uh, people often wonder, well, how much does it choke? Well, it's actually on simulated process color, there's very little choking being done. Only on type and areas where you've got color sitting on top of color, maybe for for type or text or a logo. But for design like this, there's really no choking going on. The underbase has been choked back slightly through T-seps, and it's just going to print like butter. The thing is, uh, you will find that designs like this are actually easy to print. Those of you that do spot color now, where it's four or five spot colors, colors touching colors, three or four flashes, screwing around to get the colors not to blend, you'll find that printing simulated process color, if you burn the screens correctly and follow the directions on the, the, the sequence, you'll find these things print like butter. It is a thing of beauty. In fact, your first simulated process job, you'll be blown away. You'll raise that last screen up and you'll just wonder how the heck you got there. But there's lots of options here. We can actually knock out for the shirt color. If I wanted maybe the word Barbie to be the actual gold shirt here so I can save a color, I could actually knock out the gold out of the word Barbie and let the shirt show through. I can knock out colors under colors. I can combine channels. So you have lots of options here for doing some of the final tweaks and, and making it uh, with less colors and uh, making it print better. There are some general routines built in. One of the best ones is improved low-quality JPEG. This takes a really lousy uh, JPEG with lots of artifacts and improves it greatly. This is a great little logarithm that I wrote that does a real nice job. But you can also boost color shape, saturation, sharpen images. You can upsample the image and it's, it actually goes through a nice little routine that keeps some of the sharpness there. So these are just built into the program. These are things you can run on the files before you do the separations. You know, because you get a job in where you've got that uh, great looking image and they used a real low quality background. Maybe they picked up these palm trees off a of Google image and everything is clean except for this background, and it's real boxy, has those little low-quality JPEG artifacts. Well, if you run the improved low-quality JPEG on it, it gets rid of those, and it's really cool. You can also add registration marks. Older TCEPs let you put marks in just the four corners. TCEPs 3 now lets you put center marks, center, centers, tops, bottoms, and sides, and just centers only, tops and bottom. And you can pick from uh, three different sizes quarter inch, half inch, one inch. Uh, let's check the size of this file. Some of these files I do for demos are low resolution. That's 300 dpi because these targets and this size, one inch, is based on the file being 300 dpi. And basically, uh, let's reduce the color count here real quick. You can see I'm just deleting things. And let's put targets on it. We're going to put half-inch targets in the corners. Click the button. Don't blink. It happens real fast. And now we have targets. And some of you think, well, those are huge targets. Well, you know, your choices are the Photoshop targets, which are pretty small, and uh, our nice big hunking target that's easy to line up. So there's the targets in the four corners, just like that. Now, TCEPS has uh, a built-in... I will use the word rip loosely. 
A rip typically can versifile the halftone dots, and then when it's done doing that, it prints to an inkjet printer, and a rip tells the inkjet printer to lay down more ink. Uh, some of the newer Epson printers right now, the 1400 series, the 1430, the 1500, it's called in Europe, they lay a lot of ink down because they have dye-based ink. And so now if you have an Epson printer that prints nice and dark with dye-based ink without a rip, uh, then pretty much TSEPs will convert the entire file into a pre-halftone file that you can print. In fact, let me, take a, let me open up a file and show you what, what it will show you when you're done here. But basically it's going to put the file back together as halftones. You could actually zoom in on the file and you could actually see the file with halftones applied and the color applied and dot gain applied to it. And you can see exactly how it's going to print on a shirt. In fact, many of you have asked over the years, can I do a proof that dummies down the file and makes it into halftones so you don't show the customer that high gloss image, you show them a proof that actually has halftone dots in it, and that routine is what this does. In fact, it says right here you can convert the separation of the halftones and channels, and then you can actually go to the create job proof and print that pro proof sheet out, and your proof is in halftones. While we're talking about job proofs, there's a great new routine in TSEPS 3.0 that lets you create a proof sheet. And basically, if I go here, doesn't like the document to be open in Photoshop. It allows me to fill out the basic information about the job, the boilerplate information, use my logo, and load a channel separation. Let's see if I did it here. Let's open an existing job. Now it allows you to use your own logo, use your own company name and all that information. This is not what the customer sees. This is the basic form you fill out and then when you're done you make a PDF of this. But basically you can load a shirt and it's going gonna, it's gonna to sense the shirt color from the actual channel separation. So when you load a set of channel separations into this program, it's going to look to see what the shirt color is and fill in the shirt sample with that color. You can do a front or back print. You can actually provide your own shirt graphics. These are actually PNG files with a transparent background, and you can provide your own. If you don't like my little square, boxy, uh, very traditional shirt sample, you can do more of a free form. As long as it's PNG with a transparent background, the routine will work. And so basically, you fill out the information on the job. You load the shirt that you want to use, the shirt file. You then load your channel separation file, and you can do it front and back, put in all the details, and then you pretty much say, save PDF and it's going to create a PDF of this job. PDF has actually the channels all there with the mesh counts, the print order, and everything you need, and it's really a cool feature. Now that is simulated process color. Let's talk about index color. Index color is a, uh, a name I hear a lot. In fact, I get separation orders in all the time where they say index it, and I look at the file and go, I wouldn't index that. I would simulate it. And so indexing is a common buzz term that you hear quite a bit. Let me open up an index file separation here and show you what I mean. This is index color. Index color is really weird in that it's not what you think. If I zoom in, it is all little tiny pixels. They call it square dot. And you're thinking, wow, that prints. Index color is pretty cool. Index color is widely used on stuff like this where it's a kind of a free form, not so critical design. And even though we zoom in and can see the small pixels, these pixels blend, they grow, the dot gain, they smooth out, and it prints pretty cool. So with index color, it is not exactly what you think. So here's the downside. Index color uh, uh, does not like real tight uh, vignetted gradations. It likes kind of a little harsher gradation because the entire design is pixels. So I use simulated process mainly because if I want to go from like a 20% to a zero on a halftone, uh, it's much smoother with real process. With indexing, you get kind of a, kind of a break. Uh, it's either a dot or not a dot. Now you look at your first set of index films and you'll freak and you'll think we can't burn that. Uh, index color separations have to be done at a resolution that is around 200 dpi because that's the size of the pixel. And at 200 dpi that pixel is about an 8% halftone dot. And so that's a pretty tiny dot. Your screen guys will freak out when you first give them a set of index steps. But once they burn them, they'll figure out if they can burn one pixel, they can burn the entire screen because they're all the same size dot. So indexing is used for designs that are high contrast. We've got Antone, just because I'm going to pick the actual colors from my mind for index color. Now, TSEFS gives you a couple of options. <clears throat> it gives you an index color routine where the entire design is indexed, including the underbase. The problem with that is you can't tweak index separations. When you're done, you're done. We can't do a tone curve to it. 
Uh, we, we can erase areas, we can change the ink color, we can change the pr <clears throat> print order at press, but that's all we can do. So TSEPS gives you an optional halftone underbase. That's what I have here. That's what freaked me for a second. I zoomed in on the underbase and forgot that's what I ran. This underbase is halftone, meaning I can go to tone curve. I just did a shortcut to tone curve. I can pop that base a little bit. I can't change any of the rest of the colors. So when you're done separating, you're pretty much done with indexing. So when it works, it's a thing of beauty. When it doesn't work, you're back to re-separating it. Again, it's widely used on surfing stuff, and it likes a lot of colors. You see a lot of the bigger shops that can do 10, 12, 14 colors, they'll do index because they'll pick two or three blues, two reds, maybe two blacks, a, a charcoal and a black, maybe a couple of greens, and indexing likes a lot of colors. So those of you with a six-color press may not like indexing. TSEPS gives you a variety of index uh, pre-done routines using my colors that are just pre-done. You just pick the one you want and you run it. So the beauty of index is it gives you a nice high contrast print. You pick the colors from the image. So if you want to pick the exact colors to print, you pick them from the image. The downside is you can't change the steps very much when you're done. And uh, the, the real upside is these things print like butter. I'm telling you, this print will look like this on a shirt. It'll be a thing of beauty. Uh, but if you don't like that way the blue looks and want to change the blue separation, you're back to re-indexing the entire design. And so that becomes kind of an issue. Let's talk about CMYK. CMYK is typically thought of as being only for light shirts. But I've been doing lately quite a few CMYK prints on black. It's uh, if you uh, can get triple, triple strength ink. Some of the ink companies make triple strength CMYK inks, and that helps boost the, uh, the color. Uh, sometimes you have to print CMYK where you've got lots going on. Like if you gave me this file to separate, and this is a job I did that was just for a white shirt, but if you gave me this file to separate for a dark shirt, I would probably use CMYK. I might try simulated process and the flesh tone routine, but she has so much going on, so many little subtle things. Now the thing you'll notice in this routine is that it gave me uh, two blacks, and a lot of times in CMYK you print two blacks. Typically when I do CMYK separations, I will almost always tell the customer, this, this needs to be six colors. It needs to have an underbase for a dark shirt or for even a medium color shirt, and it needs to have uh, uh, a second black. Here, in this case, we're printing a spot black. That's going to be the solid black areas, and we're printing halftone blacks. And the reason is real simple. If I kill this screen, it's going to all go solid on me, and I know it's going to have a lot of subtle areas. I'd rather have this be processed black and not, not kill it when I print it. But with this screen, this is going to be just regular off-the-shelf black ink, and it's going to give me that nice, deep black that I need. TSEPS does a great CMYK routine. In fact, the new routine does give you a couple of options for the underbase. It gives you the multiple black options, and it does a lot of gobbledygook under the hood. This is based on my years of doing CMYK separation. This is not the same as Photoshop where you click and just go RGB to CMYK. There's a lot more going on. Because the inks we use in this industry, the cyans are pretty impure. They have a little magenta cast to them, and you've got to remove that. And so the inks we use are, are definitely... Uh, not the best, and so the CMYK routine really handles lots of that. Now, TSEPS, uh, again, does spot color. I'm not going to do a set of separations for spot color. This is kind of a routine that you'll use uh, when in doubt. You'll, you'll, and you have just that two or three color simple JPEG. You'll run the spot color routine. As I said earlier, one of the trendy uh, routines is the uh, black and white old photo. I, I'm getting a lot of those lately to separate, more so than ever before. And it's a uh, designs where you print multiple rays. Like you might look at this as a novice printer and think, well, on a black shirt, that is just uh, white ink, you know, on a black shirt. Well, that would work, uh, but if I want to get it to really be rich, I'm going to print the multiple gray levels. When you see one of these shirts and you go, wow, that, those colors are so rich, and you start looking close and you see, wow, there's multiple colors there. Now, uh, granted, that's a lot of grays. TSEPS allows you to just quickly run a routine and say, just give me a black, give me the underbase and the highlight, and give me one gray. Give me the underbase and highlight and black, of course, and give me two grays or give me three grays. And you can pick the routine that works the best. Obviously, it depends on if the customer wants to pay you, you know, for the extra screens. But I can tell you that this is real trendy right now, and I'm doing a lot of steps where I'm, I'm running typically the two grays. So the design will end up being underbase, uh, two grays, uh, it's, I, I didn't run the retina out that way. Uh, no black on a black shirt. Highlight white. Hard to see on the monitor the, the difference without and with the highlight white, but the highlight is real important. So those of you that have older TSEPs know that uh, I've increased the number of routines here. This now has the two additional routines. And all of these have the same basic options. 
where you can create the job proof, create halftone dots for film off, put registration targets, improve the image. Let's go back to simulated process and look at the flesh tone routine. Another reason that TCEPS works in CS6 is in CS6 Adobe put in what's called facial recognition. They, they license some software from, from industry that does facial recognition and it's pretty cool. And so basically let's do a, uh, we'll just run this routine here. And it's just going to cook. This is a sample I've been using for years because it has different flesh tones. You know, flesh is a funny word because what's one flesh, what's Caucasian flesh is not black flesh and Asian flesh. And so TCEPS gives you in this routine, multiple uh, options of browns and medium fleshes, so you can pretty much try and find the one that works, basically, because you've got different skin tones. And, uh, you know, like the girl in the lower left, she's very pink. Uh, you got more of a brown tone. And so TCEPS allows you to have options with this routine. And it gives you the option of the facial recognition. The reason it gives you the facial recognition as an option is because sometimes if the person, the face is not right at the camera or, or at the picture and the facial recognition doesn't work. It actually will pull colors that it shouldn't pull. And so it wants to see a full-on face. And some designs have flesh, but maybe it's just a side view and, it, and you don't have a full-on face. So basically, you have a lot of options here. Okay, don't freak on this. A lot of options going on here. Uh, but basically, it gave you a maximum facial recognition, a minimum facial recognition, a, a lighter flesh tone, a medium flesh tone. You can see it's picking up different areas. And every design will be different. You know, it just depends on what you've got going on. So for this design, let's just look at it on a black shirt. We again have the optional high contrast or less contrast underbase. I'm going to keep the high contrast underbase, so we'll dump that. Uh, we know we need the yellow for this design. We know we need the red for this design. Just taking a look at the various selections we have here. Look at the light flash. Not bad. Good start. Almost too much because it picks up flesh and sometimes the background areas. Let's check and let's see if this flesh is better. Not bad. How about this flesh? A little better. Didn't quite put as much in the background, so I like that. Uh, that's too dark. If I had just dark skinned faces, then I would probably, that would probably be good, but it's just too much for this image. We don't need the pink. We need the light blue. Don't need the gray. The orange, not bad. Kind of fills in the shadows because a good flesh is overall flesh everywhere, and then you kiss it with the shadow areas. Uh, a good example, that's the brown. See what it does? It really brings it together. And so you want to find an overall flesh that works and kiss it with a brown or an orange. That's too much. And we're done. Now you're thinking, oh, it's a lot of choices. Well, you know what? To do this without a program like TCEPS would take you hours and screwing around. And at least here you have a lot of choices. We can now start dumping all the channels we don't need and keep just the few that we do need. I bet you could make this as a six color. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, what I might do is look at the orange. I'm going to select the red channel just real quick. Notice what I'm going to do is a tweak. I've got the red channel selected, the orange channel turned off. I am going to send the orange, and I could do it with a, with a button, but I'm going to do it old school here. I'm going to send the orange to the red. I'm going to send about 50% of it. That's without the orange combined with the red. That's with the orange combined with the red. And guess what? I got orange for free. So now, and I love getting colors for free. If you've ever watched my demos, you know that's my big thing. Get a color for free. And again, how long did it take us to run this routine? Took us less than 30 seconds, uh, a couple minutes in tweaks, dump some channels. Now, the key in fleshes is the highlight. You got to keep the highlight. Notice what it does. You start looking at shirts differently when now you see how fleshes are done. The highlight kisses everything, gives you that reflective highlight, that oily skin, the, the highlight on your nose. The highlight is key. It look a little flat if you kiss it with a highlight. When you're doing your color count, that's the color you don't want to drop if you can help it. And that's the flesh tone routine. Or let's talk about outputting films. TCEPS gives you uh, prompts because depending on your, your mood and, and, again, what country you're from, what if you're thinking in inches or centimeters, it doesn't change the channel information. It doesn't actually number these because you're going to actually number these when you're done because you're going to be deleting some of the channels. So what I typically will do is I know the underbase is my first color. I'll put in the mesh count, and I might even, just for the benefit of the factory, say flash after. And that's going to actually print on the actual films. 
This is called the channel header, the channel header prints. And so I'll go through now and I'll name them all. It does assign the right Pantone color. And in this case, I might think, I might say, well, let's, let's just pretend that that yellow was maybe uh, more of a golden yellow. So I could actually uh, change the color right here. The information is correct on that channel, but maybe the color was off just a hair. So you can quickly change that information. So TCEPS prompts you on the proper output. It suggests for this kind of an image, 55 lines per inch, 25 degree angle for all screens, elliptical dot. And if this is just a no-brainer cartoon design, you could make it 45. If it's a high-end design, you could make it 65 LPI. But it prompts you and it tells you what to do there. Again, it lets you convert the file to halftone dots and print either to a rip if you have a, a printer that doesn't print very dark or a print without a rip, just print right to your inkjet printer, but use the highest photo quality setting. The highest photo quality setting on any inkjet printer lays down more ink because it's higher resolution. The higher the resolution you print on an inkjet printer, the more ink you lay down. Now there's a couple of other little loose ends that it does. Just some fun stuff. Let me just open up a, a general file here. Besides doing the uh, improving the graphic, it does edge effects, and it's pretty cool. Just a little throwaway. You could do a sawtooth edge, and basically that routine is going to prompt you. Now, this is not a very good design to do that because it hasn't got any kind of a vignetted edge, so we, we won't. We'll, we'll run it real quick. It pretty. I'll just do it really far in. We'll just we'll just see what happens. It says to tell it where the edge needs to be. Again, this is not the best sample for this, but we'll just do it. So we'll click on sawtooth edge. It's going to prompt you. It's going to tell you you need to make a marquee selection, which I just did. And it's going to tell you it's going to duplicate the file, so it won't 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 ruin it. And it says the higher the radius, the better. I'm just going to take a shot at 50. And it says uh, continue. It's going to be really a, a, a very extreme, and it says, what color do you want in the edge? Remember, we have to have two versions of the artwork. I'm going to say, let's make it black, and there we have it. Now, I went to an extreme. 50 was probably too much, but you get the idea. So you have a variety of edge effects. Uh, you can also do the distress look. Let's go back in uh, history here, and we can say... Uh, Distress look white, and we can actually run that. I'm not going to run it because it takes a while to run, and I've got to search around and find the distressed overlays. But basically, if you like this topic, again, go to the website. You'll see some of the samples there, and it will actually distress the image. It will distress the black and the white images both because they need to be identical if you're going to be doing separations that where you load the black and the white versions.